Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss, back again with another video. And today we're gonna do the real review for the Motorola Razr. Now I'm gonna start off by answering the main question everybody been asking me, is this phone really worth 1600 bucks? The answer is no. Now when I did my unboxing, I told y'all that as a phone, when it comes to the specs, it's definitely not worth the price. But it might be worth the price if you're looking to buy this as a flex. Now, after using the phone for a full week straight, I can say, yes, it's worth the price if you're looking to flex. Now, with that being said, it's a lot of flex on this phone, but it's not the top of the line flex. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Say you're hanging out with your homeboys. You're going to be checking your messages. Okay, cool. Somebody's going to say, let me see that. This phone has the let me see that factor. Look how small it is. So you're going to unlock it. You're going to hit them with the flip. I am trying not to hit shoes. Bang. Check this out. They're going to take the phone and they're going to say, wow. Oh, I like this. This is nice. Okay. The first question they're going to ask you is how much you pay for that. Then you're going to have to look at them with a straight face and say 1600 bucks. They're going to look at you like you got two heads. Their voice is going to get mad high. They're going to be like, what? Damn. 1600 bucks. And you're going to say, yeah. Foldable phone, new technology alert. Check this out. The next question they're gonna ask you is, well, what does it do? For 1600 bucks, other than the obvious fold, what does it do? And this is where your flex ends, because you're gonna have to say nothing. It's just a basic Android phone, mid-range status. Somebody pulls out an iPhone, they got triple cameras, wireless charging, dual speakers. Your flex is over at that point. Fold it up, put it back in your pocket, and keep it pushing. If you want the maximum flex, all right, the maximum flex, you gotta get a Galaxy Fold. Now I paid 2,300 bucks for this one, worth every penny. Let me give you that same scenario. Now I'm hanging out with my homeboys, all right, I'm checking my messages, doing my thing. Somebody's gonna say, let me see that. This phone also has the let me see that factor. Even if you don't know that it folds, look how narrow it is. Somebody's gonna say, let me see that narrow ass phone. And you say, okay, yeah, sure, check this out. Bang. Once you unfold this, they're gonna be like, wow. Oh, this is nice. First question, how much you pay for that? 2,300 bucks. Here come the high voice. Damn! What? Yeah, 2,300 bucks. You see that display? You see that fold? New technology alert. Here comes the next question. Well, for 2,300 bucks, other than the obvious, big giant display, what does it do? Now you have the honors of saying everything. What do you mean everything? Everything. Unless that person has a Galaxy Note 10 Plus in their pocket, my phone can do everything your phone could do plus more. Big giant display, top of the line processor, top of the line GPU, flagship status, dual speakers that sound amazing, face unlock, big giant battery that lasts all day, wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, flagship cameras, always on display, video lock screen. This is the number one flex phone on the market. The Razer is up there, but it's not the champ. Now, as of right now, we only got a few foldable phones to choose from. Samsung coming out with one. We got the Fold, we got the Samsung Z Flip. So actually, Samsung will have two. Huawei has one. And on the side note, do not buy the Escobar phone. That's a scam, all right? Everybody been asking me about the Escobar phone. I ordered that phone in uh, January, uh, December. I ordered that phone in December. No word from the company. I had to go through a big, big process to get my money back. Do not buy the Escobar foldable phone. It's a scam. As of right now, we got the Razer and the two Samsungs, but this is the boss, all right? The Galaxy Fold, AKA the Galaxy Flex, number one on my list. My bad, y'all, I had to take a phone call. Now let's get into everything that I don't like. Number one, the price. 1600 bucks, not only is that TGH, that's G-T-F-O-H. All right, Moto, calm down. Let me show y'all something real quick. Motorola Razr, 1600 bucks. Here's a Moto One Zoom, 500 bucks. Now this has a Snapdragon 710 processor. This has the Snapdragon 675. In real life, they're basically the same. This one has a better camera and a better battery. How is this 1600 bucks? Now understand it has a little bit of better processor, and of course, you got the flip. 
All right, new technology alert. But 1600 bucks, no. Realistically, this phone should have been 800 bucks. I'd say 900 at absolute max. 1600 bucks, that's a hell no for me, dog. Now, if you really want this phone, I suggest that you wait. I think the price is gonna drop. When Samsung comes out with the Z Flip, if that's flagship status, it might be game over for Moto. You'll find it's on sale real soon. As of right now, we only got a few folds on the market, so you gotta pay to play. Next, the battery. The battery on this phone is trash. Now look, when you see the numbers on paper, you see 2150, immediately you're gonna think the battery is garbage. I don't like to go by paper, I like to go by real life. Because like I said, Snapdragon 675 processor, it runs fine, you use this every day, you won't notice the difference. So don't go by paper, go by real life. This is one of those times that the paper specs translates into real life. The battery is garbage. Now when I first got the phone, i tell y'all a quick story. I first got the phone, plugged it in, had it on the charger all day, took it off at nine o'clock. At around 9.45, I said, okay, let me start playing with this phone. The battery was on 80%. So I said, hold on a second. Something gotta be wrong, let me try that again. So I charged it up again, fully charged it, took it off the charge at 11 o'clock, at 11.45, the battery was around 80%. Yo, I was getting ready to rage quit. I was gonna put this back in the box <laughs> and send it back immediately. Because even if I'm using this as a secondary phone and I'm not gonna be playing on it all day, I'm just gonna have it in my pocket to flex and to talk on the phone. If the battery is draining like that, it's worthless. All right, it's worthless. Before I got a chance to rage quit, I the very next day, Moto sent out an update. After the update, now the battery discharge is normal. But as far as using the phone, the battery is garbage. Now, if you're a heavy user like me, and you like to have your phone on max brightness, you paid 1600 bucks, you wanna see what you're looking at, you're not gonna like this phone at all. After around three hours, you're gonna get the low battery alert. If you're buying this as your main phone, the battery is not gonna last you a full day. Now, of course, you could turn your brightness all the way down. You could put on adaptive brightness. You could put on power saving mode. There's a lot of battery saving tips and tricks, but for 1600 bucks, you shouldn't have to do that. All right, now I've been walking around with all these mid-range phones, all these flagship phones. In the last couple of years, one thing that I've never had to worry about lately is battery. All right, I use the phone all day long on max brightness, all of my phones, never have to worry about battery until now. All right, the battery on this phone is garbage. Like I said, if you're buying this as a secondary phone though and you're just gonna have it in your pocket, you're gonna use your, you're gonna use your heavy hitter all day long, you're on your iPhone, you know, doing your thing on this one, then when you wanna get your flex, pull this out, make your phone call so you can have that answer the phone factor like that and the clothes like that. Okay, cool, this is a nice combination to have in your pocket. The battery will last you for that situation. But just trying to use this on a day-to-day -day basis, nah bro, battery's garbage. Next. No dual speakers. Now, some of this stuff y'all might say is petty, or y'all might say, oh, how are they gonna fit dual speakers or something like this? Look, I don't I don't build the phones, I don't design them, I just buy them, and I know what I expect for my money. And for 1600 bucks, this should have had a speaker in the top. All right, it's 2020, and this day and age, you shouldn't be spending $1,000 on a phone that doesn't have dual speakers. Now, on a side note, a lot of people were saying, oh, the box, the box is, um, <laughs> that helps with the speakers. Let me show you something real quick. That's 100% gimmicks. All right, check this out. All right, this is the max volume. I'm gonna put it in the box. That shit sounds the same. I, that, 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 that don't really do nothing. It might, it might, it might go up. It might go up a teeny, a teeny bit, but it, it, it's not worth. It's not worth advertising that. It's not even worth talking about it. That that's a gimmick. All right, that's a gimmick. Don't be don't be saving this bullshit, and pulling this out, thinking that you got a speaker. Don't do that. I right, don't do that. That's a gimmick. Next, no wireless charge. I'm not feeling that at all. Now again, the theme of this video is mid range specs, but a flagship flex. But for 1600 bucks, a lot of the little things, 
that a lot of little things I want. I, if I you might call it little, but sixteen hundred bucks. I want wireless charge. I right? I use my wireless charge all day, especially on my big flex. You put it on the table. You go out to eat. You get your little portable wireless charger. Put your phone on top of it so you can still get your flex on. You spend all that money to flex. The battery is definitely going to be dead on this. So why not have wireless charge? I don't like that. Next, the camera. <laughs> again, <laughs> here we go again. 1600 bucks. The camera on this phone <laughs> is garbage. All right, it's pure garbage. Now, if this phone, if this was on a mid-range phone, I would say, okay, the camera's okay. The camera's decent. But on a $1,600 phone, the camera on this is garbage. Now, I'm gonna show you some pictures and videos. Let me tell you why I don't like this camera. A couple of reasons. Number one, when you're taking your videos, you're gonna notice that the focus, watch the videos I upload, sometimes the focus be going in and out, it be going crazy, it could ruin your whole video. A lot of times when you pull out your phone to take a video of something, you only have that one opportunity. You, you, you can't replay a lot of situations. You somewhere, you wanna pull out a video, somebody fighting, you see somebody getting punched in the mouth, you wanna video that right there. If your focus is going in and out, that could be the difference of you going viral and you having a worthless video. You can't say, yo, can y'all replay that fight again? I, I need to get focused. No, the focus goes in and out. I don't like that. Another thing I don't like about the camera is there's no wide angle lens. Now, let me say this. If you use the phone that has a wide angle lens in your camera, you're never going back to no wide angle. Even all y'all hardcore iPhone users, when you got your iPhone 11 and you got a taste of that wide angle life, you know what I'm talking about. You're never going back to no wide angle. All right, that's like going to the Stone Ages. Look, put it like this. If you got a ring doorbell and somebody ring your doorbell and you can pull out your phone and see who's at the door, you're never going back to getting up and go answer the door. You're not gonna want that. That's it, you hooked. Same thing, wide angle lens camera, I'm hooked, I'm spoiled, call me, what, call me whatever you want. I cannot go back to no wide angle. And another thing is the zoom. The zoom only goes to 8X. That's not the worst in the world, but again, I've been using Oppo phones, got the super zoom, the scumbag zoom, Samsung coming out with the space zoom. Once you use a good zoom, you're not gonna wanna go backwards. And for 1600 bucks, this is taking a major step backwards. But like I said, you're not buying this phone for the specs, you're buying it for the flex. But again, the camera, whack. Next, here's another thing that I really hate about this phone, <laughs> the side buttons. I, now I didn't really notice that when I when I unboxed it. You know when you get a new car, you're not checking all the little, the little details. You got that new car scent in your nose, you just feeling hype. Same thing with this, but I didn't notice you could barely see them, but look how close the buttons are together. Now the power button does have a little bit of texture to it, so you could feel it, but the volume up and down is mad close together. The buttons are super tiny. I just hate it. You're not gonna like the, fe the feel of these buttons. They should have spaced them out a little. You got all the space on the side. They should have put a little bit of space between them. Somebody else hit me, uh, somebody else got a Razer phone too in the comments on my unboxing video and was like, yo, Floss, you didn't notice them buttons? You got big fingers, you didn't notice them buttons? I was busy playing around with the phone and getting hype. Once you start to notice it though, you're gonna hate them buttons. All right, them buttons is trash. Next. Oh, here's another thing. I <laughs> Let me show, show y'all something. Here's something I hate about this phone. Well, I can't really say hate, I don't like. The plastic screen. Now look, we know it's a foldable phone. You know what you was, you know what you was getting when you bought this phone. You know glass don't really fold like that. You know it was plastic. Okay, cool. The sound that this phone makes, the glass, the plastic screen, I hate it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now I'm not talking about this. I'm not talking about that. Because look, when you fold it, you're not really gonna hear that. You, it's a folding motion, all right? It's a folding motion even when, when you unfold it and you fold it, you hear a little crinkle but who cares about that? The phone is being folded up. You're not gonna notice that. This is what you're gonna notice. Watch this, yo, this is bug. I noticed this too, because it was getting on my nerves. Listen to this. I'm gonna put it by my, let me put it by my mic. I don't know if y'all hear that. Every time you, you scroll up and down, look, I'm, I'm gonna put it mad close. You hear that sound? Now look, when you scroll in, and you're somewhere, you outside, you're at the airport, you're in the mall, you're at a restaurant, you're not gonna hear that. 
But when you're sitting in your house in a quiet environment, You hear that? It's where, you see, <coughs> shoes, back up. You see where, the, where that crease on the back of the phone is, right? That little space? What you're feeling is the screen pressing behind that, it's like pressing behind that. It's hard to explain. You'll notice it when you're on Instagram and you're scrolling up and down. All right? You, you scroll up. Let me, let me exit out of that before I put, put my scumbag gallery on, on, on alert. When you're scrolling up and down, listen, listen. That sound is so annoying. All right? I hate that. Now, look, I understand it's part of the game. You got a foldable phone. You know, you got to deal with it. But nah. And this, look, I'll do this by the phone too. That, Like I said, a lot of people was complaining about that. I was like, yo, I, I don't mind that. I'm more worried about this. If the video is not doing it justice, trust me when I tell you, you're going to hate that sound. Next, the plastic back. Okay, now, I'm not saying that it feels cheap, but on a $1,600 phone, it just feels wrong. I, it, does, it, it feels like it doesn't belong. The rest of the phone feels excellent, but the back just, the ridges on it. Now, look, there's an argument to be made. Some people are going to say that with the plastic back, it's more durable, less scratches, less fingerprints. Okay, cool. Like I said, we, we could debate that. But for 1600 bucks, you wanna have that premium feel. All right, this is a phone that you're not gonna put a case on. All right, you could put this phone in a pouch. You're not gonna put a case on this, so this phone is gonna be in your hand a lot. Feeling that plastic on the back of your hand, it feels cheap like this, but then when you flip it, now you get to touch the glass, it feels a little bit more premium like that. Plastic back, I don't like that. They should have went with glass, and if they if they would have used glass, then they could have had wireless charge. Perfect example, Galaxy Flex. All right, the feeling that you get holding this phone, of course, it's going to be a little bit more heavy, but having the glass panels, it just feels premium. It feels like a two thousand dollar phone. This one, the back, the look of the back, and the way it feels. It looks like this. Right, it looks even the old razor doesn't have that plastic feel on the back. The ridges on the back just makes it. It just accentuates <laughs> the plasticness. Right, it just it just brings it out more. If it would have been a flush, a flush piece of plastic, maybe not as much. But those ridges just makes it feel and look a little bit more cheap. I think they could even want this brush aluminium look, like on the zoom. That would have been nice. But it is what it is. Now, of course, y'all know they call me Petty Roosevelt, so let me talk about my petty gripes real quick. No IP rating, so it's not water resistant. Now, that's not the biggest deal in the world. You know, foldable technology, you don't expect it to be water resistant. The Galaxy Flex, this is not water resistant either. This one is splash proof. All right, so I will give them credit for that. At least it's a little bit splash proof. But with these plastic screens and all that, I wouldn't be taking any chances rocking this phone in the rain. And for 1600 bucks, I want to use my phone whenever I want to use it. Next, no always on display. Now, let me show you this real quick. No always on display. This is a phone that's going to be on the table. You're going to be wanting to draw attention to yourself to get your little flex on. It should have had an always on display. Now, with that weak battery, of course, it wouldn't have worked. All right, now look, I, of course, I'm just griping. I know realistically it can't have an always on display and a 2100 milliamp battery. I know that. I know that, but that doesn't mean I got to like it. So what I do is I just give a little example. You unlock it and leave it on the table like this. So now it'll stay like this as long as you set your, your phones out, display the timeout. So I set my timeout for usually about 10 minutes. If I really want to stunt, I put it on 30 minutes. But say I'm at a bar or something, I'm meeting one of my friends. I say, okay, I want to have this on the table so I can get my flex when they come. I have my drink right there. I just unlock it and leave it like this. But it would have been nice to have an always on display like this. So this way, when you're at work or somewhere, you got on the table, you want to know what time it is. All you got to do is glance over at your phone and see the time. Now, this does have the motions that activates it. But what if you out of arm's reach or you use, you're using a little stand or something like this? You know, always on display would have been nice. Would have been nice. Next, Android 9. All right. It's 2020. 1600 bucks 
It should have had Android 10. All right, no Android phones for over a thousand bucks should be shipping in 2020 with last year's Android software. I don't like that. Now, after all of that, I know what y'all saying. Damn, he really don't like this phone. Actually, I do. I, actually, I do. And let me talk about everything that I actually like. All right, so now let's talk about everything that I do like. Number one, Retro Razor. Now, if you're buying this for nostalgia and you want that old school look, you're gonna love this. Check this out. So you're gonna take it over to your toggles, turn on Retro Razor. Watch this. Look how sick this is. This is old school right here. I know y'all young cats is like, oh, it looks kind of pixelated. That's how it's supposed to look. Old school, vintage, right? And it actually works. So you got a fully functional dialer. You can save, send messages, make phone calls. Exit out of that. All of the tabs work. So you see if I want context, hit the up arrow. If I want to take it over to settings, hit the right arrow. If I want to change my sound profiles, hit the left arrow. And if I want to turn on Bluetooth, hit down. This is so sick. Now let me show you something. If you want to keep your retro flex going, leave retro razor activated and close your phone. Now, next time you open it, it's gonna come back. So make sure you unlock the phone first, then get your flip right to old school. So if you know you're gonna be hanging out with some old school cats and you really wanna flex, turn on Retro Razor. You know you're gonna get that, let me see that. Make sure you unlock the phone first. If you don't, you're gonna have to hit your lock screen. That's gonna kill your flex, all right? The moment is gone. Make sure you unlock it first, then hit him with the bong. This is so dope. Next, let's exit out of that. That's a nice little gimmick right there. Next, let's talk about the look. How does the phone look? Beautiful. Now, I heard some people commenting they don't like the chin. Personally, I don't care because you need that for the fingerprint sensor. And when you close the phone, it sits nice and flush. I think this phone looks beautiful. From the front, definitely sexy, sleek. The camera's not too intrusive. All right, it's right there, but this looks nice. And it looks nice. Like I said, I could have went with the glass back, but it is what it is. This is classic moto, that utilitarian kind of look. Everything is rugged and heavy duty. So I ain't mad at that. You got your moto logo, should have lit up. That would have been nice. All right, like on the $500 one that actually lights up. But as far as the look, I love it. All right, I definitely love it. Next, the feel. How does the phone feel? Not only does it feel good in the hand, y'all know the routine, but I mean, how does it feel emotionally? All right, how does it feel when you hold this phone? How do you feel emotionally? If you old school, you're gonna have a great feeling. All right, you're gonna have that retro feel. All right, for y'all young cats who never had a flip phone or a razor phone, it's hard to explain. But older people, the feel of this phone, you can't, it, it's hard to explain in a video. Once you hold it, you're gonna love this feel. All right, you're gonna feel like a boss but you're gonna feel old school. Now, when you flip it, that first flip is gonna bring you back to your childhood or bring you back to your adolescent, depending on how old you are. You're gonna love this flip. I, I love it. So this phone has a great look, a great feel. Next, let's talk about build quality. Now, when I did my unboxing, a lot of y'all was at home cringing every time I went like this. Every time I went, every time I flipped it open, a lot of y'all was cringing, but check this out. I'm heavy handed, all right, I'm heavy handed. I'm extra rough. Y'all seen me slamming down phones for years. Ever since I had this phone from day one, I've been flipping it like this, mad hard, yo. And I've been slamming it mad hard, I'm not being gentle at all. The build quality on this phone is excellent. So if I haven't noticed any, any uh, difference from how it looked brand new out the box, now of course you're gonna get your usual screen wrinklage because of the fold. I, I think they said, what, 27,000 folds or whatever? I don't know. I don't know. But ever since I took this phone out of the box, all I've been doing is trying to master flipping it like that. Now, it's kind of it's kind of hard for me to do because I'm sitting behind the camera with my arms stretched out. But day-to-day -day use, I got this down right now. See, all you do, basically, you want to put one finger right here. You put your thumb right there. Start prepping it. I, you just want to start prepping it. So when you want to get your fold... Bonk. Oh, see, 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 the one time I tried to do it on camera, I dropped it. But I haven't dropped it yet. 
Been flipping it mad hard. Now, of course, you don't have to do that. I'm just being a douche. You don't have to do that. You could go like this. Or you can open it slowly. And close it slowly. You don't have to be a douchebag like me. But, bang, I'm going like this. Not to mention, I like to unlock it first. And then hit it with the whop. Bang. So, the build quality... I'm not complaining. All right, now we're gonna have to see if this uh, stands the test of time, but I had it for a full week and I have not been babysitting this. Let me show you something. Galaxy Fold, yo, I treat this phone like a newborn baby. Now look, everybody was saying, oh, Floss, you're gonna break you're gonna break that phone after a week. I had this phone from day one. You don't see no scratches on it. Every time I open this phone, you see I go like this. Now, this is one of those phones that you don't even want to wipe. You don't want, really want to wipe the display too much because of the plastic and scratch. But you see, no scratches on it. Every time I fold it back, I put one thing on the bottom. Get a video wallpaper. I put one thing on the bottom and I close it gently. This shit right here, I get in the house, throw it on the table, especially with the plastic back. That's a, a pro to that. Throw it on the table, had it in the bed. Every time I want to flip it, I just grab it. Flip it open hard, especially if somebody's watching. Now, when I'm in the house by myself, okay, yeah, I flip like that. But if somebody's watching, I'm flipping this shit mad hard, yo. You know what I'm saying? So, durability is there for now. All right, so we got to see how it stands. But as of now, build quality, pretty good. Next, the size. Now, that's one of the things that I love about this phone. It's super small. Now, it's too small to be my daily driver because of the, the actual, the narrowness to it. Like, it, for me, my fingers is too big. I want my phone a little bit wider. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's too small. Like, I, I couldn't have this as my only phone. But as my backup phone or just another phone to have, this is sick. Now, I kind of I kind of made a joke when I was doing my unboxing. I said, for y'all cats that be rocking tight pants. Even though it's kind of a joke, I'm really kind of serious. Because some of y'all pants be so tight, you definitely can't put this in your pocket. Now, try putting this and this in your pocket. Some of y'all's pants is so tight you couldn't do this. Uh, you couldn't do this. Now me, I rock two phones all the time. This fold is basically like having two phones. But if you got a tight pants, <laughs> I had a tight pants fetish, something like this would be perfect for you. Or if you're rocking dress shirts, you could put this right in your front pocket. Ladies, throw this right in your bag. This doesn't take up too much space. Fits right in the palm of my hands. I, now, I can't even imagine a case for it. You might want to get a little pouch, though. You know what I'm saying? A little pouch to keep it keep it finger, less fingerprints off the front. But me, I've been rocking this raw dog with no case. All right, butt naked. No problems at all. So I love the size. Once you fold it, you can put this on anywhere. Next, let's talk about the fingerprint sensor. Now, the fingerprint sensor on this is classic Motorola works 100% of the time, all right? You're not going to have any problems. You're never going to have to press it twice. You can actually use the fingerprint sensor to turn the display off, turn it back on. And when it's folded, same thing. I'm, I'm getting mad wipe downs for my OCD, but same thing. Turn it on with the fingerprint sensor, turn it back off. No problems at all. Now, you also got face unlock, so let me turn that off. His face unlocks. <laughs> Watch this. Now, I'm not looking at it. As soon as I look at it, bang, opens up. Let's try that again. All right, so I hit the power button while, whilst not looking at it. All right, there's your lock screen. Face unlock. No problems with that. All right, I love that. Next, let's talk about the display. Now, when you're buying a foldable phone, of course, you're going to have that plastic feel to the display. But while looking at it, when you're looking at the phone like that, you're not gonna notice any creasing in it. Let me see if I can put something that's uh that's bright. All right, shout to Snitch Nine. <laughs> you put something that's bright. Yeah, you might you might be able to notice a little bit of creasing on a white background. But when you're looking at it straight like this, and once your eyes adjust, see, even if you did notice the crease and you did notice that it's plastic, after about 30 seconds, it's gonna look like a regular phone. Now, as far as the notch. I'm not complaining because it doesn't look too notchy. Right, it's not it's not hardcore notch. It kind of looks like it kind of looks like it belongs on this phone right here. Alright, the display is super bright. Now you see I got it on max brightness. It's very bright. No problems with that. Basically edge to edge. I'm feeling it. Now it's not quad HD and all that, but hey. 
foldable phone, man. You get what you get. Next. Oh, let me show you something else too. While we while we talking about displays, let me show you the peak display. Now, when your phone is on the table, there's no always on display, but it does have the waves. All right, so you wave it, it turns on the display, and then you got your peaks. All right, so when I'm looking at it, you see I can scroll over, I can press and hold a notification. So you see I got some rings, some motion at my doorbell. There's some YouTubes. Somebody sent me a message. There's Google. This is sick. Now you can actually interact with these. So once I unlock it, say I want a message from Facebook. Let's uh, let's uh, hit it. I, if, let, let me show you. Something. Let me say that right. All right. So say I got a, a YouTube right, and I want to dismiss it. Swipe down. If I want to accept it, I go up. I can mute it, and I can interact. Now I want to show y'all how it's gonna look when you're getting a phone call or when you're sending a text message. All right. So I'm gonna put the phone on the table. Let me pull out my iPhone. I'm gonna call this phone right now. Okay, let's hit call. Now this is how it's gonna look. This is part of the reason why you're buying this phone for that flip. All right, now I got it on silent, but you see I'm getting a phone call. If I wanna answer, flip it open. Now I'm on the phone call. Now here's one of the best parts. When you wanna hang up the phone, just close it. There it is. Now let me put let me put let me uh, turn the ring on because basically this is why you buying the phone so let me do a, let me do a better demo than that let me do a better demo all right so we hit call try this again okay get the phone call just answer it bang now you see I'm I'm talking on the phone once I hang up there it is that's pretty sick. Now let me show you the messages. All right, I'm gonna send a message. I'm gonna send test, okay? Okay, just got a message. There's the peak display, test. Now if I wanna interact with that message, swipe up. See, I wanna say, uh, how you doing? How you doing? Hit send. There it is. All right, so the peak display is pretty sick. All right, I'm feeling that. But I want to show y'all one more time. And let's, let's, let's do that right one more time. I, I know. I know. I love it, though. I love it. Wipe down. There it is. Check this out. Oh, let me get a phone call. Hello? Yo, what's up? All right, I'll call you back in a minute. Bang. Love that. Love that. My bad, y'all. I had to take another phone call. I'm getting ready to catch a flight to go to this Samsung event. So let me try to wrap this up. Next up, let's talk about the processor. Qualcomm Snapdragon 710. On paper, it sounds mid-range. But in the real world, it works just fine. All right, nice and smooth. I haven't had any lag yet. Look, if somebody handed you this phone and didn't tell you what processor it was, you wouldn't know and you wouldn't care. All right, this is not like 2012, where every time you get a new phone, last year's phone feels slow. Doesn't work like that anymore. All of these processors are starting to feel the same. If you had a Galaxy Note 9 and you got your Galaxy Note 10, as far as performance, they feel exactly the same. Especially if you're just doing day-to-day -day stuff, shopping on Amazon, going to Facebook, watching videos on YouTube. You're not gonna have a problem with this at all. Split-screen multitasking, no lag. No complaints with that. Now, let's talk about the speaker. I wish it would have had dual speakers for this price range. But the bottom firing speaker is pretty loud. As far as your little gimmick stand, <laughs> you can use it if you want. But nobody watches videos in portrait mode. Might be good for just playing music. But like I said, the bottom firing speaker is pretty good. Now, let's talk about the camera, right? The camera on this is pretty basic as far as the uh, shooting modes go, right? You got all your basic shooting modes, nothing fancy. Now, if you wanna take a selfie, do not use the front-facing camera. This camera is for face unlock. If you wanna take a selfie, right, you do your twist, use your main camera, and take your selfies like that. Now, let me show you some pictures and videos that I took.
All right, so overall, for 1600 bucks, I would pass on this. At this price range, you could get any flagship you want. Galaxy Note 10 Plus, iPhone 11 Pro Max, Huawei Mate 30 Pro. You can even get two phones and have a two phone flex. Get an iPhone 11 and a Galaxy S10 and you'll still have change. For what you're paying for, this is not worth it. Now here's the thing. If you already got a flagship phone and you're looking for a secondary phone and you want that retro look, you want the nostalgia, you want the exclusivity -ness, and you like me, you thirsty for the flip, then yeah, this is it. Anyway, Moto Razor, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this one. Shout out to everybody rocking with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google+. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Voxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time, 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the new stream on Sundays. Y'all already know, stream gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready. No meat boys and laugh. Oh yeah, special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat. Flossy underscore Carter, that's where I'm at. And a special shout out to the notification squad. I see y'all in the comment section early. Hashtag salute. Oh yeah, one more thing. I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, close your eyes. The pitch and be rolling. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces. Spock won the beam up. Energize. We're in a situation where everybody in the world uses technology. And if you're going to buy some of that technology, you got to understand certain things. Subscribe to Flossy Carter. He does reviews of all the latest technology. The iPhones, the iPads, the Galaxies, the Samsungs, whatever the fuck. The Beats by that doctor guy. And he puts his kitty cat in the videos too for you something to look at. You know, I'm an animal lover, so I like that shit. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, the Flossy Carter on the YouTube, the follow button on the Insta face, and the like button on the face look. Because if you don't, we're going to have a fucking problem here. A bad one. Now hit the fucking subscribe button.